All right, today's notes are gonna be pretty easy. Actually, if you copied the notes, you have most of the information already. Um, all we're gonna talk about today is how to add phases or states in our balanced chemical equation. So that's the only new piece we're adding is just identifying the phase of the substances in our reaction. Um, so you already are familiar with pretty much all of the phases. There's one really important one that we need to talk about. We've learned it a little bit already, but we want to make sure um, that you will be able to add this correctly to your chemical equation. So in this table, we're going to have e examples um, and show you how to write the state, um, what symbol to use, and an example of each for the different phases. So solid, obviously, we've, we've learned about already. We're going to use this symbol, a lowercase s. So when you write the phase in your balanced chemical equation, you put it in parentheses directly after the formula. So in this case, NaCl, parentheses S, means you have solid sodium chloride. So this would be in a, a reaction where you're taking solid table salt, sodium chloride, and reacting that with something. Or it could be the product, okay? Liquid, another one you're familiar with, you're gonna use uh, a lowercase l in parentheses. Sometimes if I'm handwriting this, I'll do a cursive L just because a lowercase L sometimes looks like the number one. So if you see stuff that I've written, keys or anything like that, you might see a cursive L in parentheses. So actually, liquid is not used as much as you might think. Um, Water is a really common one that you'll see as a liquid. We'll talk about some of the elements that are liquids. But other than that, liquid isn't used a whole lot because there aren't a lot of compounds that are naturally in the liquid state. Okay, so that's an example for liquid. Um, gas is pretty common. We'll have a lowercase g in the parentheses. The example here is um, ammonia, which is NH3, and that's a gas in this example. Notice that actually all of these examples, so for example, um, uh, you know, water we know could exist as a solid liquid or gas. So this is where it becomes really important to specify what phase it's in because that could change things about the reaction. Okay, So it's not always going to be the case and we'll talk about how you know it um, for your specific problem. The last one that we're not as familiar with yet um, is aqueous. We've talked about it a little bit and we use aqueous solutions all the time in chemistry whenever you mix things in the lab when you have like different colored liquids. Those are all aqueous solutions and we use aq in parentheses. Remember aqueous, it has this aqua prefix. Um, it means water, right? So when you see this, it means that you had the compound and you dissolved it in water to make a solution. So for example here, NaCl aqueous means you took solid sodium chloride and then you dissolved it in water, stirred it up, and then you have salt water. So it looks just like water, but you know that it has sodium ions and chloride ions in it. So this is a really common phase to have in chemistry, aqueous. So you'll see this a lot. Okay. So now let's figure out when, how are you going to know what the phase is when you're writing at your balanced chemical equation. Okay. If it's an element, just check the periodic table. Okay. If it's something else, some compound, um, at this point, it's just going to be given to you in the problem. So it will tell you this is solid, this is liquid, this is gas, this is aqueous, and then you just have to interpret that and write it down. Okay. But for elements, just to be clear, so you have your periodic table and it has all of these symbols here that tell you the phase. So for example, if we needed to use aluminum in a reaction, uh, we would put Al, and then this box means it's a solid. So we would do Als, right? If we had fluorine, um, if we needed to write fluorine in our reaction, uh, we would put not F, right? We'd put F2 because it's diatomic, um, but its phase is gas. So we do F2 and then with a G in parentheses, okay? Um, for bromine, this is one of the very few, right? We will use liquid. Bromine is a liquid, but again, it's also diatomic. So we would do Br2 and then liquid. Okay, um, so if you're given an element to put into a chemical reaction, you assume that it's in the phase that it is at room temperature on your periodic table unless it says otherwise. Okay, so what we'll do is, this is actually your homework assignment. Remember, the only new thing is we're adding phases. Everything else is, is review and more practice of balancing equations. But you do still need to be able to write the formulas, okay? So this is balancing equations with phases, homework assignment. Uh, we need to write balanced chemical equations with phases, 
for each of these reactions. And they're all word problems, so we have to read carefully. All right. Um, so the first one says gaseous ammonia reacts with aqueous hydrochloric acid to form aqueous ammonium chloride. So what you want to do is break this sentence down, read it one piece at a time, and get out what you, what you need at each point. So the first part, gaseous ammonia. Okay, so you need to know the formula for ammonia. That's one we've talked about before. It was in the notes. And um, in unit four, it was the only other common name I said you needed to know. Um, so that formula is NH3, if you forgot. And then the problem, look, it just tells us gaseous. So we know it's in the gaseous state. So when we write NH3, we need to put a little G in parentheses to specify that it's a gas. Okay, then we continue reading. Reacts with... Okay, what does that mean in terms of our balanced chemical equation? What symbol does that mean? Plus sign, okay, reacts with. Next thing, aqueous hydrochloric acid. And we were nice, we gave you the formula. How nice, we will not always be so nice. So we have HCl as the formula, and then what phase is it in? What are you going to put in parentheses? Aqueous, so you'll put AQ. In parentheses. And just a little fact, a little tidbit, acids, anytime you have an acid, um, it will be aqueous. So it's just a little trick for you. Next part of the word problem says to form. So these two things react and then they form something new. So that tells you that these are the reactants and they are going to turn into something else, into your product. So that's when you use the arrow. And the last part is aqueous ammonium chloride. That is an ionic compound. You must use the back of your periodic table if you don't have those ions memorized, and you need to balance their charges. So the ammonium ion is NH4+, has a positive one charge. The chloride ion is Cl-, minus, so has a negative one charge. So they automatically balance. So you need one ammonium, one chloride, so it's going to be NH4Cl is the formula, which I'll put up here, here in a second. After we think about the phase, again, it tells us very nicely that it is aqueous. So after you figure out the formula, you put AQ in parentheses after that, okay? Remember, now you have to balance. So that was just figuring out your formulas, getting everything in the right place. Don't forget to balance. So the last thing you need to do is go through and make sure all of the atoms on the left side, all your reactants, are balanced with all of the atoms on the product side. So again, go through your tips. This is just good practice. I'm going to start with something that's not hydrogen, because I see hydrogen everywhere. So I'm going to start with nitrogen. I usually tend to start with whatever's right here, if it's not too complicated. So I've got um, one N here. I've got one in here. So that looks good. I'm going to go to Cl again, because H is kind of scaring me. It's in a lot of places. So I have one Cl here. I have one Cl here. Great. It's looking good so far. H's, finally got to tackle those. So I have three H's here, but I also have one here. So total on the reactant side, I have four. What about the product side? Four, nice. So this one already balances. Remember, we don't need to write the ones. So this is just done. Cool. So let's move on to two. When heated, solid calcium carbonate decomposes to form solid calcium oxide and gaseous carbon dioxide. Lots of words, let's break it down. First thing, solid calcium carbonate. So again, you need to find out the formula for calcium carbonate. It's an ionic compound, use your ions list. Give you a second to look at that. Calcium's your cation, what is its charge? Carbonate's your anion. What is its charge? Well, it just so happens both of them have a charge of two, positive two, negative two. So you just smush them together and it says it's solid. So we'll put an S there. So calcium there, carbonate there. Balance the charges. Um, the next part of the problem says decomposes to form. So what do we put next? Not a plus sign. It's kind of a different type of reaction. To form, so this is where the arrow comes in right away. It's going to break down, decompose it. So right away, this one thing, this will happen sometimes, this one thing will break down, okay? So let's follow it. Solid calcium oxide, balance your charges, calcium oxide, and it's solid. Calcium oxide, solid. And 
gaseous carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide, this one is a covalent compound, right? So you just look at your prefixes. There's no prefix in front of carbon, so that means there's one of them. Uh, here you have di, that means two, so your formula is going to be CO2. Oh, sorry, I forgot the and. And is your plus sign. So we have CO2, and it says it's, oh no, it says it's gaseous. So we will make CO2 a gas by putting a G in parentheses. Sorry about that. All right, and then the last one we'll go through number three. So let's go one step at a time. Solid barium oxide. So barium oxide, balance your charges for that ionic compound, and it is solid. Oh, we forgot to balance here. Let's go through and balance this one really fast. So we've got calcium here, one of those, one of those, so that's good. I'm gonna go to carbon next, because oxygen's all over the place. So I have one carbon, and one carbon, and oxygen, three oxygens here. One oxygen plus the two here gives me three on this side, which balances the three on that side. So that one's good. All right, sorry, I'm all over the place. Number three, uh, where were we? Solid barium oxide. Figure out that formula, and it's solid. Plus two, minus two, so they automatically balance. It's nice. Uh, reacts with, so what will you put in your equation? It's gonna be a plus sign. Liquid water, H2O, liquid. To form, that's where our arrow comes in, need to have the arrow somewhere, aqueous barium hydroxide. Ooh, careful with this formula. Very common place to make a mistake. Barium's a positive two charge, hydroxide's a negative one charge, but be careful about this one. You're gonna need something in your formula. Hopefully you figured it out. You need parentheses here. So barium hydroxide is BaOH in parentheses. You need two of those since it's a negative one charge and it is aqueous. Remember, if you need to review any of your formulas, that was all um, unit three had ionic compound formulas and then unit four had covalent compound formulas. So you can review those videos if you need help with that. And then let's balance. So we've got barium here, one of those, one of those, so that looks good. I'm going to go to, where do you think would be good to go next? I would say hydrogen, right? Because it's only in one thing on the left and one thing on the right. So I have two hydrogens. Two hydrogens. Because that two gets distributed, right? And then here, oxygens. I have one here and one here. So a total of two on the reactant side. Product side, also have two because that two gets distributed in. All right, so that's the first three in the homework assignment. And remember that there are tutorial videos. So there is a tutorial video for this homework assignment um, where I'll go through a couple more problems. So I'll post the link for that as well.